untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue rat dragon egg deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A pretty exciting deck featuring four copies of Smoldering Egg, the two mana 04 dragon egg with defender from Midnight Hunt. Says whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a number of ember counters on Smoldering Egg equal to the amount of mana spent to cast that spell. And then if the egg has seven or more counters on it, it transforms into Ashmouth Dragon, a 4 4 flyer, saying whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, Ashmouth Dragon deals 2 damage to any target, so this card is no yoke, as we can even deal damage directly to the opponent and very quickly close out the game. And then a great combo with Smoldering Egg, of course, is going to be with Alrun's Epiphany. The 7 mana sorcery is excellent in its own right, but gets even better with a Smoldering Egg in play, letting us create 2 1 1 bird tokens with flying and letting us take an extra turn. So by itself, Alrun's Epiphany can transform our Smoldering Egg, letting us attack multiple times with the 4 4, and then maybe helping us trigger that ability in the following turn as well. And then we can also pay 2 mana up front to foretell Alrun's Epiphany and then cast it for 6 mana later, in which case we still put Put six ember counters on the smoldering egg and then if we take a look at the rest of our deck of course we're going to be playing with a gold span dragon the five mana four four dragon with flying and haste that whenever it attacks or becomes a target of a spell creates a treasure token and treasures we control can be sacrificed for two mana instead of just one for as long as we control a gold span dragon so a great way to ramp into alrun's epiphany and the various expensive x spells that are in the deck which also combine very nicely with smoldering egg then looking at our curve, it seems like we have a lot of 2-drops in the deck, but we can actually rearrange our curve a little bit. Expressive Iteration, for instance, not a card we typically want to cast on turn 2, instead much better on turn 3 and onwards, as we can play it before playing our land for the turn, look at the top 3 cards of our library, put one of them into our hand, one on the bottom, and the third one gets exiled, and then we can play the exiled card this turn, that also includes playing lands, so we can potentially get a land with it, and then still put a card in our hand, which is going to be a nice clean 2 for one and then in the late game we can find multiple spells with it then we also have the full playset of shatter skull smashing can play shatter skull the hammer pass untapped at the cost of three life as a land otherwise we can play the smashing later in the game as a nice x spell dealing x damage divided as we choose among up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers and then if x is six or more we get to deal twice x damage instead so just nice to have a land that turns into a useful spell in the late game which also helps us transform the smoldering egg so typically only going to cast it as a spell around turn five and later and then we also have the full playset of Dragon's Fire. This is actually a 2-drop, dealing 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker, unless we control or can reveal a dragon from our hand, in which case we deal damage equal to that dragon's power instead. So if we control an Ashmouth dragon from Smoldering Egg, or we can control or reveal a Goldspan dragon, we can also deal 4 damage instead of just 3. Then we've got two copies of Into the Royal, a two mana bounce spell returning target to non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and then we can also kick it for two additional mana, in which case we get to draw a card. So this is a great answer to the Tree Folk token from Ren and Seven, and another card we can potentially move up the curve to four mana, where it will also put four counters on the Smoldering Egg. Then we also have two copies of Disdainful Stroke, countering target spell with mana value 4 or greater. So great at countering those big expensive spells like opposing copies of Asika's Chariot, Goldspan Dragon, Alrun's Epiphany, Renan 7, all these format defining cards. And we can even keep up Disdainful Stroke after attacking with a Goldspan Dragon and having a treasure available. And then of course Epiphany we can potentially move to 2 mana as we can foretell it there as well. Then at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Consider, letting us take a look at the top card of our library and can put it in the graveyard if we want to and then draw a card afterwards. And this is another great way to potentially trigger the transformed Ashmouth Dragon just to deal to extra damage and kind of smooth out our draws in the early game. And then we also have two copies of Multiple Choice as another versatile X spell that we typically don't want to cast for X equals 0. Instead, if we cast it for X equals 1, we get to scry 1 and then draw a card. For X equals 2, the opponent has to return a creature they control to its owner's hand. For X equals 3, we get to make a 4-4 blue and red elemental creature token. And for X equals 4 or more, we get to do all of the above. So we can spend more mana on the Multiple Choice than just 5 total if we just want to put more Ember counters on our Smoldering Egg and then typically want to cast it for x equals 4, so it's going to be a 5 drop in our curve. 
And then we've got two copies of Divide by Zero, a three mana instant returning target spell or permanent with mana value one or greater to its owner's hand. So we cannot bounce tokens with it, but we can bounce spells that are still on the stack. So we can prevent any enter the battlefield abilities from triggering in the first place. So a nice tempo play that also lets us learn, meaning that in best of one, we can grab a lesson out of our seven card sideboard, including environmental sciences to gain two life and find a basic land teachings to draw cards if the opponent has more cards in hand than we do, start from scratch to deal one damage to any target or destroy an artifact, so you can take out an Asika's Chariot for instance, we've got Introduction to Prophecy for more card draw, Elemental Summoning making a 4-4 Elemental token, and then two copies of Mascot Exhibition as another nice mana sink, and all these extra spells we get to learn for are also great at putting more counters on the Smoldering Egg to transform it. And then we also have two copies of Galazeth Prismari, the 3-4 flying legendary dragon that when it enters the battlefield creates a treasure token. And artifacts we control can be tapped for one man of any color that we can spend on instants and sorceries. So we don't actually have to sacrifice our treasures to make mana for the various instants and sorceries. And then later we can maybe sacrifice a treasure in combination with Goldspan Dragon to make double the amount of mana. And then the rest of our mana base, besides our four copies of Shatter Skull, also includes two copies of Hall of the Storm Giants, which can turn into a 7-7 giant creature with Ward 3, which can also be a nice finisher, especially in the Alrun's Epiphany turns. And then we've got six basic islands, six basic mountains, which combo with our Frost Boil Snarl. Not a huge fan of the Snarls, but it's still okay in this deck, as we do need double blue for cards like Epiphany and a Kicked Into the Royal, and double red for cards like Smashing and Goldspan Dragon, so the additional fixing is useful, and it enters untapped if we can reveal an island or mountain from our hand. And then we've got four blue-red pathways as well. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. I'll hang on to the smashing as a spell to combo with her egg. And then divide by zero, finding another lesson will help us along on transforming the egg. All right, iteration also nice play. Opponent red green could be a werewolf stack maybe. Yep, yeah, and there's a pack leader. Another egg. I think I want to hang on to a uh, interactive spell here, either divide by zero or fire. I think I just go mountain pass. And then iterate next turn. And depending on what they do, we might divide or dragon's fire. Right, Stormseeker, I think I want to divide just to be more mana efficient. And then get, probably fine to get Sciences. They might be playing a version with Chariots, in which case getting the artifact removal could be useful too. Alrighty. How do we feel about just playing another egg and then playing sciences and then holding the iteration until next turn? Or I can play smashing as a land to have dragon's fire available. Kind of want to transform these eggs. So maybe getting the two extra counters is worth it. And then we're not lacking spells between dragon's fire and iteration. This way I could top deck Goldspan Dragon, play it, and have Dragon's Fire, which seems strong. Could of course see a fight spell killing my egg, which is a reason to hold up Dragon's Fire. Although they only have two Snowlands, so right now Blizzard Brawl wouldn't give the extra power bonus, but Stormseeker in combination with Blizzard Brawl would do it. So I'll take four. Opponent seems to be holding an instant, so could be frostbite or could be snakeskin veil as well. Here I could play Galazeth and Dragon's Fire to transform the first egg. Although if we suspect uh, snakeskin veil, we wouldn't actually kill anything. Alternatively, 
can go for iteration, see what we find, but Galazeth into two mana spells seems efficient, and then we'll save the uh, iteration for another turn. So we have more mana available in case we don't hit a land. And then I think it's still worth it to Dragon's Fire now just to get a four damage attack in. So let's see if this works. All right, there's a snakeskin veil, but we can still hit for four. Veil also would have been able to potentially kill my egg if I blocked a three-powered creature. So we'll see. The pack leader does get to draw a card if they attack with both. And they can set up two profitable attackers. Although, they might have wanted to do it the other way around, because now I could actually trade for pack leader. Which seems reasonable. How close am I to killing my opponent? So next turn I'm pretty likely to transform the other egg. I get to deal, let's say, 4 damage with the first Ashmouth. So we're looking at 11 plus 4, 15. So I'm just like 1 damage off maybe killing them. I guess that's worth taking 4 damage over. Multiple choice, excellent too. So let's start with iteration. I don't have to multiple choice for the full amount. Although let's say I do multiple choice for x equals 2. Then this would transform and I can still iterate afterwards. So maybe that's better because then we get the extra triggers from the transformed egg. And then we'll kill this. Or we can just go face. I think we go face. Opponent has to pick up a creature. And this should do it. Alright, even have some damage to spare here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand's decent. Assuming we can hit our land drops with iteration. So turn two will foretell Epiphany. Turn three iteration, and I'm happy if we find two lands. And then probably still play Mountain, although there is the argument of us stop decking a Snarl. Alright, let's foretell. I'm black green with Jasper's Sentinel. And two lands we found. And then I can even consider end of turn, try and find a second red source. Falky can take away my gold span for a while. And then let's consider for a mountain, hopefully. Mm, don't think I want all of the storm giants. And Dragon's Fire can deal with Valky as well. So don't want to let my opponent untap, because then they could play a land and transform Valky into Goldspan. 
Of course it would be tapped, but then I can no longer kill it, and bouncing it would give them treasure. So probably just kill it now. And then... Uh, either Fertile Epiphany or keep up into the Royal. Fertile Epiphany. Upside of Into the Royal is if they have another Valky, I could bounce in another turn, top deck a mountain, play Goldspan. It's gonna be Dispute Sacking Sentinel. Well, it's a lot of Epiphanies, but sadly no Goldspan on curve. So I can multiple choice for the full amount. Which makes an elemental and lets me scry and draw. And there we go. So next turn we can play our dragon. It does get even better if we can actually play the dragon and Epiphany in the same turn, but can't have it all. Storm the festival. Gonna try and find some five mana cards. Just the land and the chariots. Still manageable. Galazeth Prismari is an interesting draw. So, got a couple options. I could play Galazeth and then still have an Into the Royal available to try and set up a turn where we gold span attack and then chain together Epiphanies for the win. Kind of like that actually. And then I'm fine attacking with my 4-4. If they want to trade for Chariot, that's fine by me. And then probably fine to bounce a cat token now. Using Galazeth to tap our treasure for mana. It's going to make it a little bit harder for them to crew the chariots, although there is a downside of a Renan 7 making a large tree folk that can actually block. So maybe it was better to wait. Me took Massacre for 4. Okay. So if I gold span attack, I'm going to be one mana short of chaining together Epiphany. I think that means I gotta wait. Although, to be honest, just chaining together Epiphany right now would be pretty strong as well. I could Epiphany try and hit a land drop naturally with my extra turn, and then I can still make that play. Alright, there we go. And for one mana, there's not much they can do. Not even sure what they're holding. Maybe it's just a Lair of the Hydra being difficult. And then now will Epiphany. And another epiphany would be game here. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. We've got our dragon egg and epiphany. And a couple bounce spells to buy time. Although duress is going to mess with that plan a little bit. Takes the epiphany. And that's okay. Still looking at a turn two smoldering egg, most likely. Could get removed by various black removal spells. So not the best matchup for the egg to survive, necessarily. Inscription makes me discard two. So, tempted to keep as many lands as possible, just so we can hit our land drops and then 
cast any spells we top deck if the opponent has more discard. Although that being said, into the royal we can most likely cantrip. So this seems fine. Keep the basic lands in hands for future snarls as well. Could come up. Simple makes me discard again. And then we get to keep up into the royal. Alright, now I could play the hall instead, which will be a useful creature to have later. And gold span over the top. Let's see if we get to attack. Soul Shatter could punish us. Uh, at least we get to bounce our gold span back. And then hope there's no discard effects. Also got to make a treasure token and put two counters on the egg. Alright, let's try again. Seems like they have another one. Soul Shatter this time. So not much I can do here even if we consider in response. So yeah, pretty clean answer for the dragon. I guess the upside of casting considers if we draw into another consider, I would have had the extra blue mana to cast it here. But let's consider now. And then another egg. Don't think that's going to be good enough. I would rather find spells like Alrun's Epiphany, other two for ones like Expressive Iteration. Multiple choice is a good one too. So there's no creatures for me to bounce, but still uh, get to cast it for x equals 4, which will transform the egg and make a 4-4 token. And let's grind that to the bottom. Opponent playing Snowlands means they probably have blood on the snow in their deck. Another duress hits the Dragon's Fire. We have yet to see a win condition from them. Could activate the Hall. That's going to cost me my treasure. Could still be worth it. Opponent's at one. So a single Ashmouth trigger is going to be enough here. And our opponent packs it in, Crippling Fear, not lining up against the Four Toughness Dragon Egg. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with the fine hands. With double iteration, I don't expect to cast Smashing as a spell. Although now that we found a Snarl, I can still convince myself to hold it. Up against snow-covered forests. Is it mono green? Blank green, okay. And a florahedron, which I cannot kill. At least not yet. So egg it is. And then next turn I can either smashing for one or cast my first iteration. Alright, Thirst deals with Egg, so we'll probably reply with a Smashing on Florahedron, especially since my opponent's struggling with her land drops. And then next turn I might have to give up two counters on the Egg in order to go Iteration into Egg and find a land with it for the clean 2 for 1. So 3-3 three, three wolf attacking. Yeah, let's iterate. And then in our hand we'll put doesn't matter. I think I just want the two lands here. So 
So the wolf does get to attack past our smoldering egg. And is this a uh, blizzard brawl? Looks like it's... Nope, Inscription of Abundance instead. Alright, also would have killed our gold span, so... I can live with it. Yeah, killing that Florahedron has severely crippled my opponent's ability to deploy their more expensive spells. Although they're not doing too badly with that ranger class. Alright, there's a land number three for an eye twitch. 5-5 five, five wolf now. So finding a bounce spell like into the royal to answer the wolf would be nice. But for now I think it's attack with both gold spans. And then I'm okay using two treasures to cast Iteration, and then we'll still have a bunch of floating mana. I'm guessing they're getting environmental sciences here. But maybe they just need to get a removal spell and hope to top deck a land. And yeah, they go for Necrotic Fumes. So we have a blue and a red floating, smoldering egg or another iteration. Hmm, I guess I can play the egg and hold iteration for next turn. So try this. They found a land, but it's tapped. So I could lose to this wolf if I take it and our opponent has another Inscription of Abundance, which can put two counters on it. So maybe I should consider, see if I can find an Into the Royal. Right, Dragon's Fire. Not quite good enough, so I think that means I'm forced to chum block. Although now with the inscription they can kill my gold span, and it's unclear if I'm actually winning the game. But if they fight with inscription and dragon's fire can finish off the wolf I guess, so yeah this is fine. And it's gonna be a Grakma instead. Once on tap, iterates, and another gold span should do it here. Even had enough mana to cast an epiphany afterwards. Yeah, gold span dragon is a pretty messed up card. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and yeah, our hand seems pretty decent. We've got our eggs, our gold span to ramp into Epiphany. Could even be a game where we're better off not foretelling the Alrun's Epiphany. So we can actually transform egg right away, depending on how many other instances and sorceries we draw. So yeah, let's try that approach where we just play a couple eggs opponent black-white, so shaping up to be a more controlling strategy as they foretell a card. Could be something like Doomscar. I guess now that we've found an Into the Royal, maybe I'm still better off foretelling the Epiphany in case the opponent has an elite spellbinder. We don't want him making this more expensive. Opponent is stuck on two lanes, which is good to know. So 
So I probably don't want to play another Smoldering Egg, although I could always bounce one of my eggs with Into the Royal if they do have a Sweeper here. We'll see what they do first. Still stuck on two, picked up Iteration. Well, now I probably just Iterate. Try to find a land with it. Did not find a land, did find a bunch of removal. I think I would rather have an Into the Royal in hand. Although, if our opponent is holding on to a removal spell that they want to cast here, for some reason, then I could bounce my own egg. So maybe I do put the Dragon's Fire in hand and the Into the Royal in exile. And then I just pass. And then if they want to kill the egg, they don't get to do it in my turn, but they have to wait until their turn. Alright, now it seems like it's Goldspan Dragon time. And if they kill it, we can bounce it back with Royal. Alright, get the treasure, and then even though we would get a clue, it still seems worth it to save our gold span. Although, yeah, it's, it's an interesting decision for sure. Skullport Merchant's fine. And a Galoseth. So we have quite a few options. What happens if I play another Dragon Egg and pass? Then what I want to try and set up is just killing the opponents between the attack step and the extra turn, basically. Although if they have a Doomscar, they will be tempted to cast it. So I don't think I can afford to go Egg plus Galoseth, which would make it even easier to then go Goldspan Epiphany. But let's try this approach. Because right now I still need to draw lands in order to go Goldspan Epiphany. And then I could Dragon's Fire end of turn, which would uh, guarantee both eggs transforming, so I can hit for 8 the turn we cast Epiphany, and then 8 more in the extra turn with the eggs alone. Then we get a bunch of triggers, we get Goldspan attacking too, so that should be enough for lethal, assuming all goes according to plan. But I'm sure opponent has a bit of interaction here. Right, it's going to be a Spider Queen. That's acceptable. My children drench their hands in the blood of my enemies. Opponent is going to draw instead of uh, my words are for making Spider tokens. So I can Dragon's Fire finish off their Planeswalker by revealing Goldspan, and then hope to draw land pretty much. An untapped one. Don't give me a Snarl. Oh <laughs> no, we drew the Snarl. Okay, so now if I go Goldspan, I'm only gonna have 5 mana post-combat, so... Probably just go to Epiphany. Attack for 8. And then I guess Goldspan next turn is still enough for lethal, so... Not sure what I was worried about. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand has the gold span and epiphany. Not much early, which could be a problem, but I'll try it. Do have a smashing dealing one damage on turn three. 
but we're mostly hoping to draw some spells. Smoldering Ang would be ideal. Put on black white. Iteration is great too. So next turn we get our two for one. And a Skyclave Shade. So more aggressively slanted black white deck. And then. I think we go for egg to hand and then just play the hall here. And it's probably okay to go iteration into egg and then miss out on the counters just so we can play a land off iteration. And between epiphany and smashing we should still be able to transform it. Alright, so an Asper colored deck featuring Professor Symbology. So not sure what's going on. Another goal span. Yeah, or we could just give up the two for one on iteration just so we can get two counters on egg. So Epiphany transforms it right away. Could also smashing this turn, killing Professor and Shade, which takes off a lot of pressure. Maybe that's the play. And then next turn I could gold span into Smoldering Egg. Alright, so Pwn stepped out. Don't need to worry about a counter spell. Another Sciences. So we'll have to pay three. Don't think my gold span's gonna get to untap, but hopefully it at least leaves behind a treasure. Sciences for Swamp. All snow covered lands, so it could also be a blood on the snow deck. Alright, vanishing verse my egg instead of my dragon. So, if I double gold span, I won't have the mana to Epiphany afterwards. But I will have enough mana for, like, an Into the Royal here with Kicker, which is probably good enough to survive. And then, if they try and cast a Sweeper, I can divide by zero it. And next turn, uh, Epiphany should be lethal. So, if they attack with everyone, the question is, do I take it? I would be taking 6 down to 1. In Esper Colors, is there anything that can finish me off? Can't think of much. So I think I'm okay taking it. So we can beat 2nd main, land into Sweeper like Blood on the Snow. Ooh, the Meat Hook Massacre. Let's bounce that one. And doesn't matter too much here. Untap, attack, epiphany, and that's game over. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a pretty nice hand. Hang on to my consider for now. And then... 
I guess there's no need to play the egg right now just for telepiphany. And then next turn go egg plus consider. Alright, null priest. I guess the advantage of having the egg in play is that I could have used Dragon's Fire on Null Priest and picked up two counters. But that's okay. I'll take two. Right, feed this form unfortunately kills the egg. So we'll need to find an extra win condition. Another consider. I'll graveyard that, don't really need it here. And then pass with Into the Royal Disdainful Stroke up. Probably gonna take two, see if we need to counter anything. If not, I can Dragon's Fire the Priest end of turn. Could also just bounce it here, which uses my mana more efficiently. It's just that it's bouncing a 2-drop, which they can pretty easily replay. Yeah, still seems nice. So our opponent's probably holding a Fistful of Removal Spells, is my guess. Which we can eventually beat with our Hall of the Storm Giants. So this might be our win condition. Replace Priest. I'm happy killing it now, because I'm probably going to play Smashing as a Lance if our plan is to activate Hall. And then, yeah, I could Epiphany now and then activate Hall next turn, which also protects us against a Soul Shatter potentially, since our land has mana value of zero, so we could just sacrifice a bird instead. That does mean shields down on Disdainful Stroke. But that might be worth it. Opponent hasn't cast anything proactive in a while. And we have answers to Planeswalkers with Dragon's Fire. Yeah, let's get in there. An opposing gold span dragon could be punishing. Opponent's gonna find some prisoners. Which found egg and two lands. Goes for the egg. And yeah, the magic missile cleans up the birds nicely. So now a Soul Shatter could potentially be alive again. But we could still hit for 7 right now. Yeah. And then now probably hang on to Smashing as a spell. Anniversary can replay prisoners or missile goes for missile so we're close to transforming the egg yeah so far not a great matchup for disdainful stroke we're also down to six but a divine by zero the draw so i can play my own egg and have all my instants available with smashing to potentially transform the egg next turn. Seems decent, and then bouncing my own egg also puts it back in my hand. So there is a sequence where we can just clear all the opponent's blockers to attack with a lethal giant. Our opponent attempts to flunk, so that's minus three. So not lethal, 
So we can let that resolve, I think. Opponent moves to combats. And then probably Dragon's Fire the Adversary. And then end of turn I can divide the egg. Alright, another prisoners. Let's bounce now before they can potentially transform it. And then pick up. Got a lot of options. Kinda don't mind the sciences just to gain some life, or we could go big with mascot exhibition. Opponent found Consider and a couple lands. Yeah, the upside of Sciences was I could transform the egg, hit for four, and then still cast another spell to uh, close out the game, essentially. So maybe the seven mana exhibition was a bit overkill. But we can also just activate Hall, which is lethal here, so yeah, it didn't really matter. Alright, so we get to see our blue-red deck in action. Of course, Goldspan Dragon and Alrun's Epiphany are gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting, but Smoldering Egg also did some good work for us, so overall pretty happy with how we found a nice home for it. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.